The trailer is power. I feel a more about that than me, but as long as we got the right charger, we're good to go. So we'll need to get this mounted. Probably we'll probably just replace the existing charger. And this was what I was hoping for. They got a, you know basically a regular 110. That ultimately you just plug it in your garage or your out exterior outlet or wherever you're gonna charge it. So that's good. And this I believe is a uh, gauge that monitors the battery. Smart battery LCD. Got a dumb one. Oh, a smart one. Smart one. All right, there's our battery connectors. And that's it, I like it, just three pieces. Now we gotta get the batteries out. All right, here's what we're dealing with under here. This is the old system. One, two, three, four, we got eight batteries, so they're six volts. And what happened was it totally fried down in here. It was just like too much, whatever, voltage. It just, this is the second time this has happened. So second time, same exact spot where all the power comes out from the batteries. So we gotta remove these and figure out, now this engine is not movable, so. If anything, I'm going to put that battery pack on the passenger side because I noticed this buggy buggy's leaning a little like what most do when you only got one driver that drives it all the time. So we're going to undo all this and then we'll probably check back in. This is just labor disconnecting all these batteries. All right, definitely one of the drawbacks to lead acid. I mean, you see that we had all these with dielectric grease on them, but they still get corroded pretty nasty over time where that sealed battery should not, shouldn't have any issues like this. We got wire snips. Some of these uh, rubber protectors are a little stiff. We're getting it done. All right, so Phil's uh, chain contraption worked, although, as you're gonna see here, the outside batteries did not fit through this outside slot. So we gotta pull all these from the middle, but fear not, we will get it done. So another thing with these lead acid batteries is you see the rubber hoses here, it was an add-on kit. Uh, I had to pay extra for it. You have to keep adding them, adding um, distilled water every week um, in these things. So you're constantly pumping distilled water in them. So the uh, red lithium should totally eliminate the need for any kind of maintenance. Here's how the chain's hooked on. These little battery tabs. That was really helpful. All right, so then we had to pull one of the battery boxes to get the new, the new battery pack in. All right, so here's the original. This was the original positive to the series of batteries. So we're gonna take this one off. And with all these small wires, these are like accessories. We're gonna put these and we're gonna round it on that side. We could put it on either side, but I think it'll be a little bit better for the weight on the, on the back side. So this is coming off. This looks like a fuse or a resistor or something. And then solenoid. Not sure how that battery power system works, but it's still 48 volt. My buddy Felipe saying it's all the same system. So that's what we're doing now. All right, so we're running a wire extension. Um, that's the negative, correct? Correct, this is the negative and all the, the, the negatives to accessories that went along with it, right? So now what we have, we have all of our negatives right here, ready to go to the negative, to the battery. Okay. And then we'll use that point. Here's the, and there's, the, there's the positive accessories, and that will go to the, to the battery, also with our Main power. Main power to the control. Okay. All right, we'll clean them off. Keep going. All right, when I was cleaning these, uh, one of the ends just popped right off, so they're pretty corroded. So, master electrician, we're going to just go ahead and replace these. Those are for two of them are for the converter, and my guess is one of them is the old battery monitor, maybe. This one I think will save. That's a good connection. I can feel it. Right. So, while Phil's doing that, back to the last scene. Um, Basically, each of these has like a computer, a controller. So it may seem a little complicated, but really all you gotta do is replace where your old negative and the positive and replace them basically the same exact way to the new lithium pack. So it's actually pretty easy. It's just, you know, we're working under here. You can't really see what we're doing that well, but it's really not that hard. You just replace the old black and the red leads with the new one with the new battery pack. It really is all we ended up doing. It's the original battery charger up here in front. We'll pull that next. 
All right, so in hindsight, we could have left the old one in there because we're, we ended up finding a better place to mount the new one, but I am gonna try to sell it. You know, it's a good 48 volt charger and the batteries that are good, I am gonna try to sell. All right, so now we're basically tracing the wires from the original charger back to where they went so we can disconnect those. And then basically the, uh, the new charger is plug and play as you're gonna see. So we're basically disconnecting the old charger and this 110 plug here on the side. We're gonna, we're gonna repurpose uh, that so that it plugs in the exact same way as it did from the factory. All right, so this, uh, the old 110, we'll pull that off. That goes directly into the original charger. So I'm gonna try to sell this. I mean, that's probably a $500 unit. Obviously that's still good. Gee, and I could do it. There's three wires in there. So we're gonna go ahead and put this. So we can reuse this plug and it's just a lot easier. You pull it into your garage and then you just plug your extension you cord in and you're charging. All right, we're gonna leave this empty. The horn we got hooked back up. We're gonna move the charger location. We're gonna put it here. It's a lot smaller, which is nice and a lot lighter. Uh, there is a fan on it. So what we're gonna do is mount it uh, right here. You don't wanna get mud and stuff in that fan and mud will come up, you know, come up in here. And then we're gonna change that plug and we're getting close to connection. Get close to connection. So how did you did you take off that one negative from the old charger? Yep. Yep. All right. And again, that's the negative going into the main. I think the main controller. So that will go to the negative on the new battery. And then these positives and this main positive, which we identified earlier, go up to that either fuse or a resistor, whatever that is, is going to go to the positive. All right, so it conveniently fit perfectly in the slot that held uh, three batteries. So it's like identical size to three batteries stacked on each other. So it fits right in that frame, just perfect. We got going in here now. We got our battery positive to go to our charger. We got to get that, the controller, and then the converter. Get all of those underneath of this. We always do the, the positive first, or when you're unhooking a battery, you unhook the negative first. You'll, you'll never short it out that way. Okay, so and then on that positive, uh, them, them, all the little ones are going back on. Yep. That's correct. And I always put the, 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 the main cable, the main cable should always go up against the battery, the terminal, whatever, however you'd like to call it, should always be the one that goes up because that will conduct the most heat. And so you don't want that connection going through oh, these items. Yep. So that's always how you do that. In fact, we should put the charger should be the next one. We'll put our accessories, our converter, and then we we'll put our positive from the charger up against the battery terminal, and away we go. Alright, so here's the front of the battery. It's even got Bluetooth. You got your red, black. Um, that's going to be the meter, probably the meter, uh, and it does have a power button. So. We'll have to be careful on how we put it in. I don't know if you can just leave it on you know, once you turn it on or if you got to turn it on and off. Other than that, that's all there is for the connection. That's the positive going on. So if you remember from earlier, that's the one going into that fuse right there. All right, so on the negative side, we've got one cable that goes into the vehicle controller and the other one is the charger or the other half the negative of the charger all right pro tip for this install you could see um it's out of sight basically all the wires we placed towards the back so we took a screenshot picture of it so we knew you know where we were going to put the positive and the negative and that um the gauge has a, a little nipple if you will so it only goes in one way so we did all that by feel on the back side that's the monitor plug right there All right, so we picked a location for the monitor where we want it to go. So we got to drill a hole through basically under the windshield. I mean, you could run it kind of around or under that windshield, but it's just going to look a lot neater this way, just punching a new hole there um, where we're going to mount it. All right, we got the cable routed. We're not mounted yet, but it comes out um, through here, and that's where we're going to connect. All right, uh, we're gonna 
we're gonna give it a test. Uh, let's see if let's see if the smoke stays inside of everything. Yeah. I go to your screen. Okay, here we go. And nothing. All right, here we go. The moment of truth. Woo! We got we got us LCD. Now, interestingly enough. Now when you turn the key on, the, the original one is also showing full, full charge, although this one's showing 47%, so we may disconnect this. I've got to decide if I'm going to do that, but this one obviously is the smart one, and we could also put tie in the Bluetooth with that, so we're going to wrap this up, but we're getting close now. All right, so then we uh, worked on routing these wires. We used some zip ties and we uh, put them through these grommets under the seat so they'll all be neat out of the way, away from the engine and the heat. And we're just basically cleaning it up here. We're gonna power this thing up here in just a minute. As we cut, cut the cords to match up to the, the old existing connector, it's a, it's a male here, so you can just take a, an extension cord and run over to it instead of having to uh, well, you still have an extension cord, but it's external, so you can just get right to it. So all we're really doing is just cutting this apart. We're gonna, we're gonna put some butt splices on it, and then we will uh, we'll just give it some good tape with some Mr. 33, and we'll be all set. All right, we're gonna do a final walk around check to make sure everything works. Um, so this is what I was saying where it's convenient. You just plug your extension cord in. And the charger fan just kicked on. And let's take a look there, see if it's charging. Oh, all right, it says charging, it's spelled out. You got your temp voltage. It's got three hours, eight minutes time to full. And this thing is Bluetooth and this thing has like Touch screen. Touch screen, there's your status. The charging is on the DSG, I'm not sure what that is. It's on page three. Uh, technical stuff, let's just look at it that way. So uh, here, let's go walk around, we'll check all this. Okay, so nothing works without the key on. So that's cool, the whole system, in theory, it's everything's the same, so. Turn the key on, you can hear all the electrical stuff starting up. Horn works. Turn signals. Headlights. Uh, this ninja light works. Winch, winch works. Man, that's pretty much it. I can hear it charging, so that is sweet. We're gonna take this thing for a ride. We'll get a charge on it and then we'll take it for a ride. What a success, man. I gotta say special thanks to Phil. This was an awesome upgrade you got. I mean, this machine wasn't cheap. We, you know, we bought like the top tier. This is 10 years ago. You know, this was a $17,000 machine because we wanted the heaviest duty machine we can get. That motor in there, that's a motor built in Germany and built to last. So well worth the upgrade. If you got a cart that you want to upgrade with lithium, um, I mean, you could, you could order a lithium and hire it out if you want. Or if you're pretty good with your hands like we did, what have we got? Three ish three and a half hours into this oh no we have it and then two and a half maybe it is uh, i guess we have maybe three, about three three ish hours about three hours or so three, three hours, hours but pretty much everything was plug and play the yeah. the, the, the oh, longest yeah. and hardest of it was just getting the old batteries out yeah yeah and then getting that new one in was a little challenging but man it's awesome um, i'll probably throw a strap around it just to be safe but in, in this buggy it fits really nicely in the old battery slot yeah, so it's, it's not going to be sloshing around it, it fit, fit right. with three batteries it took the same space as three it's three Yep, out of me. It used to have eight batteries. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. Good luck if you do your own. Uh, we'll probably take it for a ride next time. We'll get it fully charged, and we're going to hit some of the hills on our Ozarks uh, new farm because we got some steep hills. That's really going to test this lithium power if it's legit. So they say it's supposed to be a lot more zip, a lot longer battery life for electric buggies and golf carts. We'll find out. Okay, let's throw the seat on. But hey, before we finish, uh, Phil brought up some good points when you think about it. We calculated that we saved, what, roughly 300 pounds. 300 pounds. Which is gonna help your hill climbing and your uh, your range and all that because between that charger and the uh, eight batteries as compared to this one, we figure it's 300 pounds lighter. Whoa, it Even with the right direction. 